Today we are here at the Cimarron Valley Research Station in their fruit orchard. And we are joined by Becky Carroll, who is our fruit tree extension specialist. Becky, I know a lot of times this time of year, people are looking to add fruit trees into their backyard. Tell us a little bit about some advice you might give that first time grower. Well, the most important thing is make sure that you're buying something that is adapted for your area. So Oklahoma is not California or Washington, so we have very fluctuating temperatures and so we want something that's going to be adapted to our climate and the amount of disease pressure that we might have. So that's really important things to consider when you're looking for a fruit tree. Now I know a lot of times that's the big thing is when is the last frost going to happen mm -hmm. and that can be detrimental to those fruit being set. Right, we want to make sure that the trees that we're ordering are going to be adapted to our, our climate. And one way we can kind of look at that is the number of chill hours that are required for that tree to start to grow in the spring and produce fruit. Okay. And so a chill... You're talking about the winter hours, yeah, right? Yeah, the cold temperatures. And it has to be between 32 degrees and 45 to 50. There's a couple of different models. But the number of hours after they go dormant kind of um, we accumulate those hours when they're between that, zero, that 32 and 45 and those numbers we accumulate to see how many chill hours these trees might need. And in Oklahoma we range from about 800 chill hours that we normally get in the southern part to maybe a thousand or twelve hundred hours in the northern part of the state. And then some of these trees are going to be uh, low chill varieties or, or higher chill varieties. And you think of things like apples and pears and cherries that are grown in the northern states that do really well up north. They usually have a higher chill hour re requirement. So they need more cold temperature need, in order to set that fruit. Right. And if it can't be too cold because that doesn't count. It has to be above 32. Okay. Now if we get above 60, it starts to take away some of those hours. It actually subtracts. Yes, <laughs> okay. it, it will take away our chilling. So if we end up with a really warm February, we might lose some of that accumulation that we had gotten earlier. Okay. So it kind of can get complicated if yeah. you're trying to buy fruit trees, but I know some companies make it a little bit more simple. Oh yeah. By just enter your zip code and we'll recommend certain varieties sure. for you. And it's also by zone. Okay. And so most of Oklahoma is going to be in zone six and seven. Mm -hmm. And so just know where you are in the state and then find those trees that are going to fit. But like you said, some, you just put your zip code in, they say, these are the trees that are going to work for you. Are there any that you probably should avoid? Like if it says Texas or Florida, yep. should we avoid some of those southern states? Those have been bred to do well in those areas without a lot of chilling. Okay. And so if you see something that says Texas Star or Gulf something or Florida Sweet, those are probably going to be low chill varieties. When we plant those here in Perkins, in the central part of the state, they may meet, meet all their chilling requirements before February, get a couple of nice warm days and they start to bloom or even leaf out and so which means yeah if we have another freeze that comes through you've lost your crop right and sometimes you can even have tree damage because if they're um, actively growing you can have wood damage to those trees as well okay. so it's best to stay away from those and that that's applicable to all of most of your fruit trees most fruit trees are going to have a different amount of chilling needed okay. so things like figs and pomegranates they just need to lose their leaves and they're ready to start growing okay. again and so that's why a lot of the time our figs die back to the ground every year because they don't actually ever stop growing uh, they they just start accumulating those those hours and start when we get warm they start growing again mm -hmm. and so if they're actively growing and we get temperatures that are below about 17 they're gonna die back to the ground so what about that backyard gardener who might live in an urban space that you know is very limited on space available for a fruit tree well they might consider something well they need to be careful because if they're planting things like pears or apples, some cherries, um, and plums even, they may need two trees for cross-pollination. Now, it just doesn't mean you can plant two golden delicious and have pollination. You have to have two complementary varieties that flower at the same time. Okay. And so, most of the time, the catalogs give you a good idea of what is going to 
uh, pollinate each other. So okay. they give you some help there. So if you have limited space, you might consider growing something that's a columnar type of apple, has short spur growth instead of long shoots. And so it stays more upright and, and not, it doesn't spread out very much. Or you might look at a dwarf apple tree. These are uh, some of our, our the, the dwarf types. We have some semi-dwarf, but you can keep them at a size that's manageable with your pruning. Okay. And so it, it is important to make sure that you know the pollination requirements, especially for those pears, apples, cherries, plums. Most of our peaches, nectarines, and things are gonna be self-pollinating. Peaches and nectarines are gonna be more difficult to manage the insect and diseases. Okay. They have a lot of issues and have to be sprayed pretty much from bloom time until harvest. And that can be organic spray too. It can be but... organic spray, but it has to have some type of insect and disease control from, we start disease control on peaches at bloom time and then introduce our insecticides at petal fall. So we're avoiding spraying those, those pollinators. Okay. But it has to be continued every 10 to 14 days until harvest. So it's a big uh, investment of time. Yeah, okay. Well, what about sourcing these um, trees? I and mean, what size should we be looking for? Because I know they sure. vary from anywhere from a whip that you get in a box or a little sack right. to something that's already over our heads and in a container. Well, I like to invest in those smaller trees if possible. And I like to order my fruit trees from a nursery that specializes in fruit tree production. They're gonna have the best quality, they're gonna have the best varieties, and know what they're selling you. So mm -hmm. they can provide you some assistance in what's gonna work best as well. But if you buy a large peach tree, and I've seen some that may be 10 feet tall, and you bring it home to plant in your yard, I'm gonna recommend that you cut it off at knee high. Mm -hmm. And so it may be $100 worth of tree, but you're gonna cut it back to knee high. So that's very difficult for you as the homeowner to do that pruning. But if you don't get the structure set, especially for peaches and a lot of those prunus types, you're never gonna have enough sunlight or airflow through those trees to help with the disease problems. And not only are you losing a lot of your investment that you just yeah. paid for, but also it's usually a larger diameter yep. that you're cutting versus some of those smaller whips. Yeah, that... if, we, if I can, I will order about a 24 inch whip tree plant that, especially for peaches, and it will catch a larger tree in year three when it starts producing. Right. So they have better adaptability, better transplanting, um, and it's just gonna be easier on your pocketbook and your uh, your heart when you have to do that <laughs> pruning to it as well. Well, I know this is kind of the time that people are starting to order, so um, what, how, what do you do once we get those in? I like to have my trees delivered about the time that I'm ready to plant. And I like to plant about mid-February to early March. And so I got in a box of trees just the other day and I'm not really ready to plant just yet. Now, if you get them in early and you're ready to plant, go ahead. But if you're not ready to plant, we're gonna, I'm gonna show you a way to kind of tie them over until you're ready to get them in the ground. All right, let's go take a look. Okay. So I've got the order uh, box that I received last week. And so whenever you get them in before you're ready, you wanna make sure you open them up, make sure there's enough moisture in there because if they're too dry, you're gonna have trouble with, um, with their survival. Mm -hmm. And so make sure they're moist. A lot of them will come in with peat moss or newspaper shavings or something. And so I'll leave all of that on right now because we're gonna heal them in. H-E-E-L, uh, heal in. So, so it's we're not just planting not yet. planting. We're just gonna store them until we're ready to plant. Okay. And so what we've done, and this had plastic, so we removed that. But if it's got other material, the newspaper mulch, just leave that on there, it'll be fine. Okay. Now this is just protecting the roots from uh, freezing or drying out. And so we're gonna lay them in this little ditch that we've already uh, prepared. So it's kind of a flat surface and then it levels out. And we're going to protect the roots the most. So we'll use this uh, mulch pile that we've got here with some soil in it. And just cover them up. Just right? cover the roots okay. well. And then make sure that it is um, wet. Right now we're kind of in a drought. So we want to make sure that we keep this moist while we're keeping them healed in. And if the uh, 
trees actually came in a little bit dry, would you want to soak those? Before? Yeah, yeah, I think so. Soak them for a few hours before they are placed in the in the hole here. And that's that goes for before you plant as well. Right. You would want to make sure that they are um, have a lot of moisture. And now, how far up do you go? Just where the Well, you can be? cover the rest of it with mulch if you'd like, but the most important thing is just make sure that it's tight with no air pockets in here so it protects those those roots. I mean, I, it looks pretty rough. <laughs> I know, you're just <laughs> stepping on it. <laughs> but it's really um, not going to hurt them. And the, the more soil mulch um, that we're covering them with, the more protection it's going to provide. Now, we really want these to stay dormant until we plant them. And so that's um, another reason we could cover them completely over. Okay, so basically we're just laying them down. They're not gonna start rooting in here or anything like now, that. Now, if you leave them, they will. <laughs> <Okay>. <laughs> but we want to just keep them here until we're ready to plant, which is gonna be in just a couple of weeks. Okay, so it just buys us a little time yep. until we have that perfect mm -hmm. spot figured out. Yep. All right, well, thank you, Becky, for this little introduction into sure. backyard fruit trees. Um, and I know there's a lot more to be known about this, so we will catch up with you again later. All right, thank you. We hope you enjoyed this video as part of our Oklahoma Gardening YouTube channel. You can also find even more videos on the OK Gardening Classics YouTube channel. And join us on social media for great gardening tips, photos, and discussion.